Welcome to another episode of Point of Care Ultrasound Education on the Pocus Club channel. Thank you for tuning in. Over this series, I have a special guest joining me in our mission to teach point of care ultrasound to clinicians who look after patients and would like to use the best possible bedside tool to help diagnose and treat their patients. Dr. Peter Weimersheimer is joining us. For these few episodes, Peter has worked as an emergency physician looking after the people of Vermont and has recently joined Butterfly as the Vice President of Clinical Integration. Peter was one of my supervisors on the Ultrasound Leadership Academy Fellowship, and I consider him one of my mentors and a friend. Today, we are going to remotely teach the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland, um, Sono Games team, how to do the eFast exam. We are going to do this entirely remotely. Peter is casting in from the wilds of Vermont, and I am in my kitchen. This will be split into episodes for each of the locations that you will scan in an eFAST exam. The right upper quadrant, the pelvis, the left upper quadrant, and the sub xiphoid area. The lung component I have already covered in previous episodes, and you can watch them over here. If you are interested in teaching remotely, observe the language that we use to describe probe movements. This is especially so even if you are teaching at a live course maximize the amount of probe time for your learners. I hope that you will be able to use this both to troubleshoot your own images and when teaching your colleagues the eFAST examination. Yeah, be, you, want, you want to have the dot towards the patient's right. Transverse. Towards the, yep, and get, okay, your hand on, and get your hand on top of the probe. Like, there you go, super. Right now, are you, like you're not seeing crap on your screen, right? All you're seeing is a bunch of crazy stuff. Why is that? Where's the heart? It should. Uh, or is it turned this way? Wait. No, no. no. So it's like, like kind of like more. that, but like you need to kind of get under there. Okay, so just up more. Yep. But what's your depth? There you go. Uh, right, that, okay. right. You're shooting under the ribs to try and get a view of the heart. So I typically would set you know, that depth like here. Okay. So we're at. Oh, oh, and, there look, we go. and look, there's a beating thing. Yeah. Yep, there it is. So when you're doing the sub xiphoid, you want to remember to just just get a lot of depth. You can always cone it down and adjust it and get a better view later on, but you <laughs> want to be able to see it first. The other thing is here, right here, looks like there's a xiphoid process and you're over here. A really mm -hmm. cool trick is go ahead and take a transducer right here on right on top of the, the, the actually the okay. inferior costal margin, laterally. Okay. Dot towards oh, okay. the, yep. Go up right over here where you see my that blue mark. Right. Get right on bone. Mm -hmm. Flatten it out. Okay. Now as you right. slide, as you sl go, go ahead and flatten it. That tail goes down here. Now as you mm -hmm. slide down, slide down, and once you get off that bone, push upwards. Right now, push. Okay. Oh wow. Should, right. The idea is that you want to get as close as you can between this and the heart, which is up over there. Right. That's your mm -hmm. shot. So the closer right. you are to this xiphoid process, the better chance you have of seeing okay. heart. So what I like to do is like to be on top of the xiphoid process. I'll slide off a little bit and I'll just push right up and, and push pretty hard. I tell patients this may be uncomfortable. Yeah, but look this at that view. Burn. But look at that view you have now, right? Yeah. You can see yeah. there's what's the structure where right here? What's that? Is that the left arrow contract? That's that's the RV. <laughs> that's yeah, the right Yep, and yeah. this is liver. So right here is where you're looking for fluid between the RV and liver. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. the cool thing here, you see how this ventricle here looks kind of round, yeah. right There's over here. You see how that? See if you can get that view again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're no, just kind we're of um, we're having a little conversation about the image. Yeah, oh, keep yeah. on keep on conversing. Yeah. So okay, nice. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, you see how this ventricle here looks a little bit circular? Yeah. So rotate your hand counterclockwise about five degrees. Okay. Just other way, counterclockwise. Oh, oh yeah. See, my right and left are Yeah. A little more. <laughs> and to, there you go. See how it lo elongated? Go ahead. Yeah, you, yeah. You have to flatten out a little bit. Hey, Greg, okay. can you take a breath in and hold it for a second? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. 
Woo. <laughs> See that? So oh, if you yeah. if you have a if you have a breath, a patient is breathing. If you haven't taken a breath and hold it, go ahead and breathe. Don't turn blue on us. <laughs> okay. But if you have a patient who can breathe, then you can talk to them and take a breath in that pushes that heart down into your transducer. But you see how nice and elongated this ventricle is now? Yeah. It's this yeah. not it looks like a ventricle, like that. So right. remember that when you see a circular left ventricle, it means that your transducer is not in the same plane as a ventricle, and it's almost always a counterclockwise rotation. So anytime, okay. whether you're whether doing a parasternal long axis view, a sub xiphoid view, or an apical four, doesn't make a difference. When your ventricle looks kind of like an oval, like it's like this, you rotate counterclockwise. Go ahead and rotate again, look counterclockwise. Look at yeah. that. Okay. See how it long, mm -hmm. elongates out? Yeah. Great, cool. Yeah. So, so are you happy yeah. with this image? Um, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, I don't Do see any, but I don't think. <laughs> so we're yeah. Yeah, so between yeah. the right ventricle and, and the liver. Yeah, and we yeah. don't see anything there. And you're getting a lot of information. You're seeing no pericardial oh. effusion here. The RV mm -hmm. here is less than two thirds, less than it's two thirds of the LV. And the LV mm -hmm. has a really good squeeze. Like sometimes you have a trauma patient who comes in hypotensive, they may have primary mm -hmm. heart disease. So you can get that information really uh, quickly. All right. So you're mm -hmm. awesome. Now, so Greg does not need a needle in his pericardium. He's also not dying. Well he's, really he's not to... dying from heart failure and he does not have a big <laughs> PE. So you're good. Well right. done, Greg. So, Greg, you're, you're having a, a rocky morning or afternoon. <laughs> it's, a, it's morning where I am. Price now? Yeah, I think we should look at the heart because the, the nurses okay. are getting a little bit anxious because they, they're saying the blood pressure is uh, 60 on 40. Mm, okay. So I'll go at the. Xiphoid, um, the, yeah, the sub view, perfect. Sub view, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want me to go transverse or? Uh, well, you will have to go uh transverse. You have to go uh, you know, uh, the probe, the probe will be kind of like in this plane facing up towards his uh, his uh, uh, uh no. So uh, if you see my hand here, you will have to hold the probe with your hand on top. Top. Yeah, so your fingers have to be on top of the probe. Let go, let go and put your hand over the top. Like that. Oh, okay. Just show me the your view of the... Okay, and uh, the probe... Uh, yeah, the uh, where your probe should be... Uh, your probe marker should either be towards the left side or the right side. So, left side. Yeah. Okay. And then you're approaching the sub xiphoid area. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so like that. Yeah, you, you can you can hold the probe, you can hold the probe a little bit more uh, comfortably. So have your fingers across the top of it. So so the reason why you want to do this is because so you can actually uh, tilt the probe all the way down uh, like that. Okay, I'm able, I think, to move my hand like that. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That works as well. As long as you're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, Let's that's it. Perfect. This. Yeah. So I'll go right there. Uh, yeah, so you, you, yeah, that's it. Perfect. Okay, so there's something moving there. Yes. Okay. I see your heart. Uh, so you <laughs> see his heart. Yeah, perfect. Uh, now, do you think the depth is enough? No, I think I need to push more. Uh, you or need to push more. No, not really. Uh, so you see, you pole. see the heart. You see the heart is over here, but you're not seeing yeah. all of it, are you? Yes. No. So do what I do you need to go up? Uh, no. You need to increase your depth. So you probably want to go to about twenty, I'd say. Yeah. There you go. That's perfect. Okay. So you see, this is the pericardium here. Okay. You mm -hmm. see the bright white here. Yeah. And you kind of see the heart kind of like moving in the middle of all of that, right? Yes. Now, what are you specifically looking for here? I'm looking for fluid around the heart. Okay. And where does that appear? At the... the, the pericardium, yeah. The pericardium. So <laughs> this line or this line? No, this the one? one below. This one, here. Yeah, the one below. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's so this is pericardium, and this is also pericardium. Okay. Yeah. So, so what you want to see is you don't want to see two kind of like white lines and then black in between. 
Okay. If that makes sense. So so then there'll be fluid in there. So sometimes you have a small bit like uh, over here, what you may see here with Thomas, if you look, right, you see two lines in his pericardium. Is that correct? Mm, yeah. See, if he was on the bottom, yeah. you can kind of see them separate. Yeah. yeah. So anterior. So this is the, the, the part closest to the probe, the most anterior part of the heart. So this is likely the fat pad, the epicardial fat pad. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, you know, when you look at your anatomy textbooks, you see this kind of like layer of fat that kind of like runs yeah. over the front of the heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be uh, mistaken for pericardial fluid, especially if, uh, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. epicardial fat part is really, yeah. really um, uh, large, you know. So what you want to do... Black? Uh, sorry? Would it appear black? Yeah, it can appear kind of like a... Uh, sometimes it can appear hyperechoic as well. Mm -hmm. And in the case of trauma, you have to be a little bit careful because, you know, like if it's really... Uh, if it's hyperechoic as well, it could look like clotted blood. Clotted blood also can look kind of like about the same. Oh, okay. So okay. how you do... How you clear that is by actually tilting the probe. So, so if you can uh, bring the, uh, bring the, yeah, the iPad back, yeah, perfect, excellent, uh, and you do that by tilting the probe uh, this way, oh, like this, and this way, okay. Uh, but you know, keeping an eye on the pericardium the whole time. So not not a huge amount, okay. Okay, but just a small bit, and then you'll see it disappear. So the the, the heart is no longer there. So this is this is pericardium. So you want to tilt tail up a bit very slowly very slowly just go nice and slow because this is ivc and all that mm -hmm. okay so when you tilt then this this should actually that line uh should become a solid line really if the you know like posteriorly the epicardial fat pad doesn't exist okay okay so you're just looking at liver there you're looking at ivc is here okay okay excellent good job all right, and that's how you how you can differentiate between an epicardial fat pad and mm -hmm. whether there's a pericardial effusion. The other thing as well, if there's a pericardial effusion, you would expect it to be between the pericardium over here. Okay. okay. You know, so if you are if you only see kind of like two white lines and some black stuff in between on the front, mm -hmm. okay, but you don't see at the back, you have to be a little bit more. I suppose uh, you have to question the diagnosis of whether there there is a pericardial effusion at all. Okay. So it's usually on the right side. Uh, no, the most, uh, the, what is, uh, inferior. Uh, well, if he's lying flat, then, you know, you probably see it inferiorly. Yeah. You know, but if the pericard, because the pericardium is a fairly small space. So, mm. so if there's any fluid, you should see it, you know, kind of all around. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so he doesn't seem to. So if he had a pericardial effusion, what we what would we have to do? Um, Call for senior help. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so you know you know that that could be that could be tamponade, and that's why you know, um, and and that's the whole reason for this exercise in the first place, mm -hmm. right? You're looking for occult uh, causes of shock, and obstructive shock is the one that's going to kill. Um, uh, the poor patient first, okay, as opposed to kind of like hypovolemic or blood loss or something like that. Mm 